In the last few lectures, we have completed energy signals, power signals and neither energy nor power signals. And now it is very easy for us to solve the questions based on these three signals. In this lecture, we will solve one question in which signal is xt and it is equal to e raised to power j 2t plus pi by 4. And we need to find out what type of signal is this. If it is energy signal, if it is energy signal or power signal or it is neither energy nor power signal and we can do this by the help of two different methods method number one involves the plot of signal xt and method number two requires the average power of the signal i will explain the two methods one by one in the first method if you know the plot of the signal you can easily tell the answer but this method is good when you have four options and you have to choose only one option out of them. In case you need to write down the solution, like in conventional papers, then you need method number two. So let's start with the method number one. Here signal xt is complex exponential signal. Complex exponential signal. And not everyone knows the plot of complex exponential signal. It is a 3D plot. And I have already discussed complex exponential signals in great detail and there we saw the plot of this signal so it's good to remember its plot I will paste down the plot of complex exponential signal in which the condition is like this there are different conditions and you can follow the lecture in which I have already explained real and complex exponential signals here the blue waveform is the waveform of complex exponential signal which is having this form and in this you can see the signal amplitude is non-zero for infinite duration of time and when this happens we say signal is infinite extension signal and when signal is infinite extension signal there are three possibilities it can be energy signal it can be power signal or it can be any np signal and the everything depends on the amplitude values here if you see the amplitude values they are not decreasing and they are not increasing they are constant in case of energy signals, the infinite extension signal amplitude or peak amplitudes should decrease. In case of any NP signals, the infinite extension signal should have increasing amplitude or peak amplitudes. But if the signal is power signal, then the amplitude or peak amplitudes will not decrease and will not increase either. They will remain constant like in this case. So simply, signal XT is a power signal. It is a power signal so you can see how easily we have obtained the answer of this question within seconds we have obtained the answer because we already knew the plot of the signal and by looking at the plot we can determine the type of the signal but this method is good for multiple choice questions now we will see the method number two in which we will calculate the average power p here the signal is periodic you can see the waveform the signal is periodic so we will use the formula of average power for periodic signals. It is equal to 1 over T0 where T0 is the fundamental time period. Integration from minus T0 by 2 to T0 by 2 mod xt square dt. This is the formula. Now let's first find out mod xt square. And for this we will first find out mod xt. Mod xt is mod e raised to power j this is j here 2t plus pi by 4 we need to find out the modulus of this but first let's talk about e raised to power ix this is one standard complex exponential signal and we can write it as cos x plus j into sin x and we already know if there is a complex number z which is a plus ib and if you are interested in finding out its modulus or magnitude then it is equal to under root a square plus b square square of real part plus square of imaginary part and the square root of some of them in this way we can calculate the modulus so if i want to calculate the modulus of e raised to power i x then it is equal to cos square x plus sine square x and then the under root cos square x plus sine square x is equal to 1 so we have under root 1 and the square root of 1 is equal to 1 so we have mod e raised to power ix equal 
to 1. So you can see modulus is equal to 1 and it is independent of x here. So whatever you have in place of x, the modulus is always going to be 1. Now if you compare e raised to power j 2t plus pi by 4 with e raised to power ix, you will find 2t plus pi by 4 is equal to x. But the modulus is always going to be 1 because it is independent of x. So mod xt is equal to 1. And to calculate the average power, we required mod xt square. So mod xt square is equal to 1. And now we can easily calculate the average power p. It is equal to 1 over t naught integration minus t naught by 2 to t naught by 2. Mod xt square is 1. So we have 1 here. And integration of 1 is equal to 2. So in next step, we have 1 by t naught inside the bracket t. The lower limit is minus t naught by 2 and the upper limit is t naught by 2. Now I will put the lower and upper limits t naught by 2 the upper limit minus minus t naught by 2 the lower limit. I will simplify this and I will have 1 by t naught multiplied by t naught. T naught and T naught will cancel out. So finally, the average power P is equal to 1. And you can see the average power P is finite. And when average power is finite, this implies the signal is power signal. And this also implies the total energy is equal to infinite. So signal XT is power signal. And we have obtained this result by following the method number 1 and also by following the method number 2. So you can follow method number 1 and method number 2, it's your choice. But it is good to follow the method number 1 when you know the waveform of the signal and you are having 4 options. But when you have to write the solution of the question then it is good to follow method number 2. It is good for your university examinations because here we have a step by step solution. So this is all for this lecture, if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section. In the next lecture we will solve few more questions based on the nature of signal.